Okay, we are recording. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Patricia Pollack, and I'm going to be doing a presentation on SBAR communication to uh, student nurses at Countryside Hospital. So, um, has anyone heard of SBAR before? Any experience? Yeah. Okay, good. Have you had a chance to use it at all or practice it? or? Uh, okay. Yes. So you have had some experience. <coughs> what can you tell me about SBAR? What do you already know about it? It's a way to communicate. It's a way to communicate, right? And anyone else? It's an acronym. It's an acronym, <laughs> right? Good. Okay, so yeah, this actually is to help physicians and nurses communicate with each other. You know, and it is a communication model and um, should make things a little bit more clearly when you go to talk with a physician and give report. So let me go into this a little more. Okay, so we know that is an evidence-based tool, okay, with a set of standardized questions. So whoever is familiar with SBAR, whether it's a physician or nurse, they know what you're doing, that you're going to go through the whole set of questions, the SBAR, and if they can just hold off and wait, they'll, you'll, they'll know that you're going to actually get to all the information that they need. So that's an advantage. Uh, allows the physician and nurse to communicate clearly and effectively focusing on relevant information. That is one of the issues that um, JCO has identified as a safety issue, is the communication gaps between nurses and physicians. A lot of times when we look at what happened and what was the mistake um, and that might have led to um, a patient care issue, we find that it's a communication problem. So. Um, it's, it's a problem all around the country, it's not just this hospital, but we found out that nurses and doctors, the way they're trained to communicate is very different. So nurses are, are trained to communicate with description, you know, and a lot of background information, whereas physicians are trained, you know, just give me the facts, cut right to the chase, and tell me what I need to know. So when you get these two people together who have very different communication styles, what you have is the nurse trying to give a lot of descriptive information, like we were supposed to do, and you're talking to the physician who was taught get right to the bottom. So what happens is the nurse feels maybe you know like she was he or she was cut off in the conversation, and the physician is thinking, come on, you know, let's get to the point, you know, so what's taking you so long? So this is a way to combine so that everyone understands. Uh, how to talk about what's going on with the patient, okay? And um, it's also in a way to organize information and then just to reduce repetitiveness. Okay. So this was interesting. I did not know where SBAR came from, and we have the Navy to thank. So this this actually was initiated 12 years ago, and where um, on the on the Navy submarine. They had the, you know, of course the captain and the crew, you know, would have to get together and exchange a lot of really critical information in a very short period of time. And they had to figure out how are we going to do this. So this is nuclear submarines that they did this on. And they developed an SBAR technique. And if you've ever known anyone who worked at a nuclear power plant, a lot of those people that were engineers of a nuclear on a sub also came into the nuclear power industry they had nuclear power in the subs. So they brought that SBAR of communication technique into you know, nuclear power plants. So you often hear someone say, uh, I want you to turn lever 12 on, you know, or put it into the on position. And you'll hear the person say back, I hear you telling me to take lever 12 and put it onto the on position. And then they would say, that's correct. So. Um, Nursing and uh, physicians had heard about this and thought it was a really cool <coughs> idea and we could adopt this. Because remember, we did a lot of verbal orders and we found out physicians would say it, nurses thought that they heard a certain thing, and then maybe there was a problem with the communication. So Kaiser Permanente, along with the physicians from all different areas, um, physicians who were uh, internal medicine, family doctors, and emergency, came up with uh, the SBAR technique. So it teaches nurses to speak up the medical chain of command. So that's what we've learned to do. And this is also increases the patient safety, for patient safety, and avoids the hit and miss of giving information. 
So sometimes when you go to speak with a physician, you have all of these things in your head you want to say, but because there isn't any particular order, you know, you find out you hung up with a physician and you miss something that you thought was critical. So that's another advantage to uh, use an S bar. All right, now, you guys, okay, you have this out here. This is what I gave you to look at. There's, I noticed from looking at all the different S bar uh, tools and like that are out there. There's, some of them are just a little different. The S seems to be different how they how they lay it out initially. But the one I have for you, you can eventually adopt your own system. Is they give you examples of what you would say. So, for example, on this S bar, you know, you might say, "I'm calling about. I'm afraid the patient is going to." arrest or something you're going to communicate. So these, this is just your example for, for the background. You can use the patient's mental status, alert and oriented or confused. You can include what the skin is like, uh, what your assessment is, what you think the problem is going on, and then your recommendation. And the last one, it's not on here in this particular model, but it's the second R, and that's uh, for R for repeat back what you heard. Um, that turns out to be uh, something you really want to uh, be an advocate about. Even though the physician might sound like he or she wants to get off the phone quickly, you want to make sure you heard correctly. Okay, so we'll use that. All right, so I just call this getting your ducks in a row. <laughs> you kind of know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, when, before you call the physician, you want to have everything you need to have because they're going to, if they ask you questions, you don't want to have to say too many times, you know, oh, I don't have that information, I don't have that information. So that's what I call it, ducks in a row. Okay, so what are the ways you want to have your ducks in a row? Um, these are just some things that I've gathered and you might have others that you develop in your career. Um, you're going to try to have all your stuff with the S bar. You're going to have to fight that feeling of, let me just call the physician and tell him that his patient is sick and get up here right away. So you have to fight that <coughs> feeling. So you want to get all your information, and that includes your vital signs on the patient. Pull up the electronic medical record. Have it available in front of you, because they're definitely going to ask something. And that way you can look at it. You have it up. You have it ready. And then once you have that, you can call the physician. All right. And um, you, of course, want to identify yourself and say what unit you're on. And I'd like to just give that a couple seconds after I say who I am or what unit. So, you know, a lot of physicians have patients all over the hospital. So if you just jump in with who you are and then all that information, it takes them a second or so to figure out who it is you're talking about, especially if they're covering for another physician. Okay? So, and then, of course, you want to identify the patient by name and their date of birth. Okay. All right. So with S bar, uh, you're going to describe your concern with the physician and what's happening at the present time and what has changed. Okay. So you have to really um, drill down what what is going on so that's different than what the patient or what the physician had seen in the past. So that will be your situation. So when you come up with your writing your S bar, that's what you're thinking to yourself. What am I worried about? What is my concern? Why am I calling to begin with? And then you just kind of decide, is this something I need to call right away? Can I wait till they get there? Okay, is there something acute going on? Your background. Why is the patient there? Um, what's pertinent to the situation at hand? You know, um, why is, what is this situation leading up to, especially if you're taking care of a patient and you can look at the trend, you have to kind of decide, is this leading up to something, is the patient going, you know, is getting worse, you know, is their fever getting worse, is their respiratory rate getting worse, where do you see this going? And then, you know, of course you want to tell them what the history is, the patient might have COPD, what the lab results were, any prior medications, so you're just trying and and put the whole piece of the puzzle together. <coughs> okay, your assessment. 
This is the part when um, you want to gather your information. You are the eyes and the ears for the physician. So they're not there, they're at the other end of the phone. So um, you want to do the latest vital signs. If you're busy and you know, I, or you want to use your time in a different way, you can have a tech come in or another nurse and get a set of vital signs, but you're going to need a current set of vital signs. And then you're going to do a clinical assessment of the problem. So if it's their uh, lungs that are an issue, you want to be able to tell the physician, listen, they're decreased on the left lobe. And then I put this in here, your concerns go with your gut. And I think as nurses, especially newer nurses, you, even though this is relatively new to you, you still come in with a lot of background, a lot of information a lot, you know, that you have learned. And if you have a gut feeling about something, <coughs> sometimes that's the, you know, that can be your only sign. There's plenty of nurses that said, you know, I just got a bad feeling about this guy. I can't quite put my finger on it. You know, and people do respond to that. So don't be afraid to say that to someone. You know, I'm worried about this, I'm worried about that. So it kind of gives people a heads up, you know, and um, maybe look in a direction they hadn't thought of before. Because there will, you know, there just is a time when we all said, I thought about that, but you know, I just kind of ignored it. So I just wanted you to think about going with your gut. And just because you're new doesn't mean that you should ignore that. <coughs> okay, then the response. <laughs> Um, is there something you need from the physician? Okay, so maybe if there's a problem, like do I need to, you know, maybe I need a, a, a respiratory treatment, you know, so you want to tell the physician, or can you order uh, a Foley? This person definitely needs a Foley. Um, so uh, <coughs> be clear about that. Don't just assume that if you, you know, give them all this information, they'll be thinking the same way. This is a time to have a nice, a good dialogue, a good productive dialogue about your patient. And then, of course, you want to, you know, make a recommendation. So, like I said, you're the eyes and the ears. Okay. Then the other R for SR is the read back. And um, sometimes, for physicians, they're used to giving the same type of orders, and they can do it really fast, and they blurt it out in a way that you're trying to write as, as quickly as possible. So. Um, I, even though they want to hang up, I always tell them, you know, listen, I'm going to read this back to you. Because at that point, you have to be 100% sure that you heard the information correctly. And if you're not 100% sure, you have to call them back. If they don't like it, then, you know, that's the way it is. But you have to call them back. So it's just easier to do it right then and there with the S bar, the final R, read it back. Okay? Saves you a lot of time, trouble, and this is the time you say to yourself, I'm a patient advocate. I'm going to do what's right. I'm not sure what he said or she said, so I'm going to read it back. So I put in paint the picture. That's what we always used a term in nursing. It's like um, you have to describe exactly what you're seeing because the other person might be standing in their kitchen or driving in their car and they're not there. So you paint the picture of what's really going on. So does anyone know who the artist is? <laughs> Very famous artist. I was about to say, I like recognize it, but it's, I need to, I don't need to stare at it longer. I took humanities when I didn't know it. Okay, so it's, it's Norman Rockwell, and what he did was he's painting a picture of himself looking in the mirror to paint a picture of himself. So this is what you're looking at, is an actual picture. Yeah. So I just wanted you to remember, I thought I would use this to paint the picture so you can remember to do that. Okay. All right. Now let me just pull something up here because I have a, uh, a little clip I'm going to show you. And it's S bar. Example of nurse giving report for six one minute. Hi, Dr. Feldman. Yes, uh, this is Amy to us. I will take her this uh, Well, she's an eighty-two year old woman. She has a 
three days ago with DBT. Uh, she's on heparin, telemetry, and oxygen. She's been alert and pleasant with no problems other than urinary retention. She has full release. But tonight she appeared confused. Um, she's awake and oriented to person, but she thinks that she's at her aunt's house and that Ronald Reagan is present. Yeah, well, no, I, I checked with her nurse from the last few nights and confirmed that she doesn't sub down and she's normally very sharp. Her heart rate has increased to 110. Her blood pressure is down to 110 over 60. Yeah, her systolic usually runs 150. Yes. Uh, her temperature is 37 Celsius. She looks pale, but not uncomfortable. Her coax studies are within the parameters, and her blood gas is normal. All other in labs are normal. But she's not putting out much urine. It looks about I'm not worried about her. I think she needs to be seen. Can we order some labs? Maybe for her urine precaution? Yes. Sounds like she could be getting septic. Send a urinalysis with culture, chemistries, and a CPC. Thanks for calling. I'm on my way, but I need to know if there are any changes in meeting. Okay. <coughs> so what did you get out of that? What did you think? There's no read back. Can you repeat back the orders? Oh, that's a good point. She did not. <coughs> I think that is a good describing the situation. Right. Right. What did you remember her saying that you thought was relevant? Um, that her uh, alertness has changed. Right. Her orientation has changed. Right. So she talked about, she actually talked about what it was before. Yeah. Right. So she, she, right? Yeah. 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 Right. So she puts it in context, mm -hmm. you know. And it sounded like she even looked to see that the patient have a history of sundown syndrome. And she said, no. You know, so we knew that, you know, that couldn't be a reason. What? So it was like the Dutch or anything. Right. So there must be something else going on. Yeah. Um, uh, she also talked about vital signs and what her vital signs were. Right. So what they were. So you're putting things into perspective. Because if you just say what someone's vital signs are, some people are always hypertensive or a little hypotensive. So we're looking at those trends, you know, how are they changing? I found a quote that I thought was relevant, you know, to SBAR and what we just saw here. This is from a physician, and the physician's saying, the problem occurs, he's talking about me talking to a nurse, the problem occurs when a nurse calls with basically only the diagnosis and that I need to check the patient out. Then I have zero confidence. The nurse needs to say, here is what we have, here is what's going on, here is what I think is going on, and here is what I think we need to do. Okay? So, you know, I, I do think you know, they're looking for, you know, a partner in this. So, um, you know, and they're, they're, I mean, so I think the SBAR gives all of that, you know, it empowers you to get all that information. Okay. All right. I can make this big again. Okay, so we have our case studies, and we'll break into groups of two. This is case study number one. This 57-year-old male with COPD admitted for a pneumonia for the past two days, receiving antibiotics, cetriaxone, azithromycin, and supplemental oxygen. The patient recently received his scheduled nebulizer treatment with respiratory, increasing his nasal cannula oxygen from 2 liters to 6 liters. His respiratory therapy was in there. His vital signs are the SATs 98% on 6 liters, blood pressure 132 over 88, heart rate 102, respiration 10. All right, so now you get report from the nurse, and she said the patient's sleeping. But when you go in him, you find, into see him, you find he's not easily arousable. The physical assessment, even though you're tempted to run and tell someone, you're going to do a physical assessment. 
reveals the patient opens his eyes upon stimulation, but falls back asleep when undisturbed. You also notice twitching of muscles. You listen to his lungs, which are diminished with scattered wheezing. You ask him if he has any pain, he does not. The cardiac monitor reveals sinus tachycardia with premature PVCs. Okay, so that's case number one. And what I'm going to ask you to do is, using this information, you're going to put it in the SBAR format and give report. Okay? And then you can make a recommendation. All right. And so case number two. Since we're working on PEDS, I threw a PEDS case in. This is a four-year-old female admitted with pyelonephritis, otherwise no past medical history. The patient was found, you go in the room, the patient was found unresponsive, incontinent of her, <coughs> and there's blood <coughs> on her teeth. You stimulate the child, she opens her eyes and moves her extremities, but does not verbalize. You assess the child checking for trauma related to a possible fall. Vital signs are blood pressure 120 over 75, heart rate 150, respiration rate 20. The patient's skin feels warm and dry, lungs are clear, heart rhythm regular, tachycardic. The patient does not follow, I should say tachycardic, uh, patient does not follow commands, pupils are equal and reactive. The mental status is improving as you evaluate her. Okay? So, same thing. Um, I'm not asking you to figure out what's wrong with the patient. Um, if you have an idea, that's great. But what you're doing is the same thing. This is the information you're going to use for SBAR, and you're going to give report to each other. Okay? And then we'll have someone give a uh, report out loud for case one and then case two. Okay? All right. So you can break up into groups of two. Someone from case one and case two. Case one. 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 Well, you're going to, right now you're disseminating information, okay, because I don't want you to leave out. I want you to come up with a, an idea of what you think it is, and then you're all information to that idea. Okay. Okay. So you're, you're gathering a lot of information. Okay. But there's so many.